Hey, look up! There's a meteor shower happening right now! Okay, not really. But I made you look. If you're a fan of full moons, there's one coming up very soon. On February 27th to be exact. I really hope this video comes out in time. The moon will be lit up right in front of our eyes because it will be located on the opposite side of the Earth, where the Sun is. It will help illuminate the moon, providing us with a night to remember. Take a good look at it. Doesn't it sort of resemble a huge snowball just hanging from the sky? Some native tribes in the northern hemisphere of our planet might have thought the same. That's why they used to call it the snow moon. You know, when it was big and full, like this. Okay, go ahead and grab a telescope now, because on the 9th and 10th of March, there are three planets that will line up for your aesthetical pleasure. Starting from top to bottom, you'll see Jupiter, then Saturn, and last, but surely not least, Mercury. Now, depending on how good your telescope is, and if you've even got one, chances are you'll see some details of these three planets. You adjust your telescope a bit, and there it is! Another planet. Almost like they're not thousands and thousands of miles away from each other. But that's not all. They'll be visible to the unaided eye, too. This means you won't even need a telescope. Well, you'll probably see them like this. Three bright white balls in the sky. Still astonishing, though. You'll need to be looking at the southeast around half an hour before the sun rises. And voila! There they are. In the mood for a relaxing shower? How about a meteor shower instead? This time, you can keep your telescope safely stored. And you don't need to worry if you miss one or two of these showers, as there are quite a few happening this year. They're pretty evenly spread out, too. And I don't mean the meteors. Those come close together. Grab your calendar and put a reminder on these months. You can choose from April, August, October, November, and December. Some months even have two showers instead of only one, like October and November. Choose the month and day that works for you. Just check your calendar again. If you don't mind it being a bit chilly, just wrap yourself up in a blanket and hop in the back of your pickup truck. Then, all you have to do is stare up and enjoy the sky all night long, waiting for the shower to happen. Or, if you like to work by the clock, set up an alarm to wake you up in the middle of the night. That works too. Mercury's coming right at you! Watch out! Nah, don't fret. It's still right up there. Just a bit closer than usual. That's because on the 17th of May, it'll be at its greatest eastern elongation. What this means is, it will be easier to observe. Right after sunset, point your eyes to the skies in the west and try to look for the planet. This happens again during the 4th of July, but this time you'll have to look to the east. You might need a compass. Start your celebrations early in the morning, just before the sun rises, with a gorgeous view of Mercury, and of course, a cup of coffee in your hand. If you still don't catch it then, try September 14th or October 25th. How about when the moon loses its natural white color? This happens just a few days after Mercury's first performance, on May 26th. It's called a total lunar eclipse. The moon will get gradually darker as if someone was dropping dark red paint on it, until it finally reaches this sort of rusty red color that you can see on the screen. Not all of us will be able to see this, unless you're on a cruise in the Pacific Ocean or in the calm fields of Eastern Asia. If you live next to the Tokyo Tower, you're in luck. It'll be visible throughout the whole of Japan. And if you happen to live in the western part of North America, you'll also be able to see the moon shapeshift. Well, not quite shapeshift. It's not going to turn into a wolf or anything. That only happens if you're a werewolf, which I definitely am not. So it's more like a color shift. Still, on the moon, picture a massive black hole. Well, this next astronomical event kind of resembles that. On June 10th, during the annular solar eclipse, the moon will be the furthest it ever gets from Earth. While it's doing this, it ends up covering most of the sun leaving just a bit of its curvature for us to see. If you happen to look at the sky during this time, what you'll see is a massive ring of light. Chances are you won't be able to tell that's the moon out there, since it'll be the same color as deep space, the absence of color, or just a very deep black. Oh, 
And that ring you're seeing? That's the sunlight. OK, since we're talking about rings, I've got one for you. Saturn's ring. This planet is the full package. It's a planet, it has a ring, and get ready for this, it has 82 moons. It feels like every year a few new ones pop up out of nowhere. Anyway, during August 2nd, the planet will be at its closest point to Earth, and the Sun will help us catch a good sight of it by brightly illuminating it. Not only will it be brighter than it ever is during the whole year, but it will also be visible all night long. This is the time to get that telescope ready again. A medium-sized one should do the trick. That is, if you want to see its rings and some of its moons, the ones that shine the brightest. Another planet that's coming closer is Jupiter, this time on August 19th. The same thing that happened to Saturn will happen to it. The sun will shine bright on its big planet face. The only difference is that this time, if you have a good pair of binoculars lying around, you'll be able to see the planet's four largest moons. Although they'll look like tiny dots, but now you know what they really are. Okay, so you've been thinking about those meteor showers I mentioned earlier. Well, this one is the best there is. It's called the Perseids meteor shower, and it almost looks like the sky is a pitching machine. Except it's pitching meteors. During this particular shower, you might even be able to observe up to 60 meteors per hour. They're very bright too. Look at them go! Zoom! Oh, there goes another one. The best days to get cozy, sit on the grass, and just lie there looking at the sky is during August 12th and 13th. Usually, when these two days come around, the sky's dark and clear, perfect for a meteor shower. Picture a slightly red moon. That's called the partial lunar eclipse, and it happens during the 19th of November. This same red moon will get darker and darker as it moves through Earth's shadow. It won't be visible to everyone, though. Here's a globe. Let's mark the places where you can see this partial lunar eclipse. First, we got Eastern Eurasia, then Japan. The Pacific Ocean's included in this list, too. But unless you got a boat, you're likely not going to be there. Then we've got North America, Mexico, Central America, and lastly, some parts of Western South Africa. Grab a hold of your eclipse glasses and get ready for this last one. It's the last solar eclipse of the year. This one in particular is the best one to catch, as the moon will block the sun for almost two minutes. You'll be able to see the almost ghost-like sun's corona, also known as its outer atmosphere. The sad part is, you'll have to be in Antarctica or the South Atlantic. Eh, just be careful out there. I heard it gets a little chilly.